Bismillah and welcome to another episode of The Bridge. Today we have Ard Ads, yeah? No mistake here. Guy's been in the game for many years, mashallah. You know, he's, he's done many things. Very balanced dude from what I've seen from his YouTube videos and his interviews. And today he's given us some of his time to interview him, talk to him about, you know, his industry, the music, you know, his background, where he's come from. And inshallah, we're going to get into it. Jazakumullah khair for coming, bro. We appreciate you come from far. So we want to get straight into it. You know, your life. Where was you born? You know, just a quick little five minute, your early stages. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, where was you born? What area did you live in? That kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, salam alaikum to everyone watching. Um, salam. My name, so originally my name is Adam, but a lot of people know me as Ad Ad's my stage name. Okay. Um, so I was born, I was born in London, St. Mary's Hospital, it's in a Paddington area. Um, I got, I got sent to Morocco at about five, six months of age, and um, I stayed there. But by sent, you mean you went with someone? No, no, I got so my mum, my mum sent me literally. So I think the the plane staff was dealing with me in it on the plane and stuff like that. So she stayed here. No way. For work, etc. So yeah, stuff like that. So I went to Morocco by myself. Um, my dad stayed here as well. At the time, it was my parents were still together. Um, yeah, so I went back to stay with my family and um, I didn't come back until I was five. So when I had got back, my mum was living in Brixton. So yeah, I just, uh, I went, st started living in Brixton and then that's where I joined my first primary school, etc. cetera, started growing up in that area. Okay, okay. So just yeah. if, even when you went there, so who raised you in Morocco then? It was then? my grandma. Your, your mum's... Mum. Yeah, like yeah, she's passed away now, but it was, was my grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And just quickly about that, was there anything specific about Morocco? I don't know, did you was it different from here? Or do you remember even things like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was in Morocco, I remember fully knowing how to read and write Arabic. Um, something that is now gone now that okay. I don't remember. At five years old. At five years old. So I think I learned at about two in Morocco. No or three day, yeah, they, they it's very early, they make you study mm -hmm. the um and sort of stuff. So yeah, I was I was reading and writing Arabic like perfectly fluently. Um, I came here. I think it went after two years. Mm. Yeah, it's good. So when I because I used to go back every summer. Okay. To Morocco. So even when I came here at five, still my mum would send me every summer, stay with the family, mm -hmm. etc. So I went back when I was seven, and um, yeah, I couldn't read and write Arabic. Mad. Yeah, and my uncle was on to me. I remember he was super super on to me. The one over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. My uncle over there. He lives in Casablanca. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. So yeah, I just I just started um, focusing on like learning English and obviously, um, yeah, just focusing on my school over here, really. And when you went to this school, that was in Brixton, you said, yeah. Yeah, it's a Loughborough, Loughborough Primary School. Yeah. So at that, and then we're talking what early nineties now, obviously. Yeah, I'd say ninety seven. Okay, or oh, so late nineties. Yeah. Would you say? As you're a Muslim, them times obviously, and you're too, too Muslim. But was there a Muslim community in Brixton at that time, or was you was like one of the main only Muslim kids in your school kind of thing? The, uh, I was the minority, but there was in there was there was few Muslims. There was few. I wouldn't say I was the only Muslim in my school. One or two. Yeah, there was a few Muslims. Um, Talking about reverts or like born Muslim. No, as well? born Muslim. So a couple uh, Somalian brothers, couple uh, Turkish brothers, and. Like one or two sort of like Pakistani, Bangladeshi sort of okay. people. But we were like us, we were the minority. So okay. like in every class, probably like one Muslim, mm -hmm. if that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And how how did you feel like, in terms of your Islamic identity at that time? You spent five years in Morocco. So obviously you had a strong connection to Islam at that yeah, primary yeah. age. Correct? Is that, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, 100%. Um, mm -hmm. So when I first came to England, it was the, the first thing that I noticed was the culture difference. It was like a culture shock. As a five-year-old coming from a Muslim country to mm. now come into um, to joining a sort of, I wouldn't say Christian school, but a mixed sort of school. Mm. Um, it wasn't the teachers, I would say, that was making me uncomfortable. It was more the kids, but obviously we're kids in it. So when you're young, you look different. Obviously they could tell I look different to them um, immediately. Oh, um, they used to say I worship elephants. So at the age, like age six, mm. I've got people busting jokes. You get me saying I worship elephants, okay. this and that. Yeah, all of this stuff. 
obviously we're kids though, yeah, yeah, it's, so it's, it's joking, just, bantering. Yeah, bantering. But obviously, when when you're like, like I said, because like I was like the only sort of Muslim in the class, it's me and one other brother, and obviously everyone's laughing at us. It kind, it doesn't, I wouldn't say it got to me, but it kind of mm. like a little bit. Mm-hmm. You question like, bro, like, am I different? Like, yeah, 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 obviously, because yeah. you're young in it, but. I grew out of that by the age I was like seven years old, eight years old, I grew out of that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that was that was like that was a thing of the past, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then so from that then quickly on to say secondary school, what school was that? Uh that was Archbishop Tennyson's. It's another um Christian kind of school. Yeah, so I struggled to actually find a secondary school, not because of um like studies and stuff. I was doing all the tests, getting into the schools, but then um my religion, like so I got into Sacred Heart. And they said they don't take Muslims at all. No so, way. So yeah, so that was my first option school because I proper wanted to go there. My best friend, he's Colombian, um, Leandro, and he was applying for Sacred Heart. So it's a funny story as well. I think I went with his mum to apply for the school and she took both of us. And what happened was they told her there and then he's Muslim. There's no point of him coming to this open day or whatever it was called, yeah? And she didn't, from when they said that to me, she didn't let her own son go there. Mm. So he ended up going BTG. That's respect, yeah. She didn't like that, yeah. But um, yeah, so I ended cold up... face to you lot's face like that. Straight away, yeah, yeah, yeah. straight away. They said it to, to my friend's mum's face, it? bro. Yeah, yeah. They told her well, straight. Because it's like a religious school in it for Christians. So why does a Muslim kid want to come? Mm. But on a positive look, uh, your friend's mum also had your back and said, "Well, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She dealt with that let my, my son's friend in. I ain't yeah. taking my kid there too. Mm. So that's a positive in a way. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then so you got into Archbishop. Yeah, I ended up going to Archbishop Tennyson's and Stockholm accepted me as well. But my mum didn't really want me going into a mixed school. She wanted it to be a boys' school? Yeah, because I was already sort of getting in trouble in year six. Just okay. little, little minor Mr. stuff. Misdemeanors. Yeah, so she just mm-hmm. wanted me to go to an all-boys school. You know, parents, they think with no girls, there's no distractions. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Especially my opinion, Muslim parents as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. she didn't want me mixing with girls, mm-hmm. exactly like another reason. So, so just on that, just quickly on the parents' part, I mean, alhamdulillah, they kind of like want you to be on, on dean and stuff. Exactly. And they don't want you to go to a girls' school. Is that exactly. correct, yeah? They instilled in you that Islamic values and stuff. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah, the, the main thing for my mom was um, she didn't want me obviously mixing with girls. That was the main thing at a young age, 12 years age, mm-hmm. 13, 14. And um, yeah, and, not, and, and then the girls not letting me obviously focus. But um, as I got older, my mom realised that the boys' school was kind of the, it was, it was, I wouldn't say it was the wrong option, but it was like what, what she didn't want to happen happened in the boys' school because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's just, yeah, everyone's bored. Boisterous. Exactly, yeah, mm. testosterone everywhere. So it was worse, I would say, because all my friends that went to mixed schools didn't get in as much trouble. Mm. So yeah, I would say it was, it was the boys' school thing, it's, it's not that. Good. If you feel like you're sending your children to like an all boy school, a son especially, um, I would double think that still because there's just bare boys there, isn't it? So, mm. do you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point. It's, it's a, a good, good point. point. Yeah, because you don't you, you think oh yeah, they're gonna stay out of trouble, but mm. there's just you get me, bro. Mm. So, would you say that's more of the environment though? Yeah, 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 possibly. Because you have a boys' school right there and then say probably five minutes around the corner, you usually have a girls' school. Even yeah. locally here, you have yeah, a boys' yeah, school do. and then literally... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a side point, obviously. But um, well, Somali, they watch a lot of Indian movies, yeah? And there's, a, there's a movie called Mohabbatun or something like that. And basically, you have a girls' school and then you have a boys' school and through the gates, you can see the girls' school. Mad. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? So it's like yeah. a lion seeing a lioness and you can't... Mad. So it makes the, the desire for the other side even more as if like you can't exactly. get to them. So when school yeah. finishes, the first place you're going... Yeah, you're just floating the... at the bus stops. And, yeah, <laughs> this is it. Well, so sometimes even boys' school, yeah. they'll put two boys' school next to one another. Uh-huh. So it's like always fights. Okay, like a exactly. competition. It's like right next, okay, you know, or it's like a quarter mile down the road. So yeah, you're yeah. leaving, they're leaving, and there's always going to be some yeah, sort of beef yeah, with that yeah, as well. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know, yeah, yeah, do yeah. they do that purposely? It's like a... Yeah. I don't know. Agenda don't behind know. it or something. <laughs> I don't know, but Islamically, you would put a boys' school and a girls' school. So how would that... So his issue is you have a boys' school. Mm. It doesn't necessarily solve the girl issue. Yeah, yeah. But I think, look, with the Islamic angle would be other things around it. Mm. The way society functions, the temptations which are here wouldn't be in a perfect Islamic society. Mm. So that desire will be not diminished, but it'll be less than 
you know, the, the way we're living today. You mean so like, yes, it's just a boys' school, but because it's a girls' school around the corner, it's you know it's going to be peak and problematic. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I think. Uh, uh, and uh, Ad is trying to say. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. exactly what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you go into year seven. Would you say you already said from year six you was getting into trouble? Yeah. So from year seven now, was you getting more into trouble? Yeah, it was kind of like a downhill journey from like year five, year six. Okay. Fights, fights, or um, fights, just robbing stuff from like the local Woolworths, uh, taking the bus to Lily White's, robbing, you know them no fits, yeah, and shit, yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. pointless stuff, man. Just proper silly stuff. Just yeah, robbing, robbing the place, just doing all these little stuff. Sneaking into swimming pools, not paying, getting booted out. Mm. You know, like just yeah, yeah, little like, things yeah, you do yeah. when you're 11 years old, just stealing next door neighbor's bicycle. Like, yeah, little things like that. Mm. And um, yeah, obviously, as I got older, it started to get worse, and it. So that's what I said, it's like a, just a downhill from there. Mm. But if you reflect on that now, would you say there was something that geared you to that? Like, was there things that you watched or was there people that you had as role models that kind of made you think, let me let me lean towards that and not let me lean towards legit and work harder and get a job and that kind of angle? Was there something that steered you more to that side than another side? Yeah, it was... Uh, I wouldn't... I'd say I'm not a blame. I don't like to blame people because we all make our course, own decisions course. and we all have our own path. But yeah, I would say it was more because of my environment and what everyone around me was doing it just sort of made it harder for me to keep my head sort of on a straight and narrow. So for everyone around me is doing madness and going this place, that place. And obviously this is the people that I'm hanging with every single day. I'm going to school with them, eating lunch with them, moving to girls with them. So mm-hmm. obviously this is my friends now, isn't it? So I've literally just started, yeah, just doing what the man them's doing but from, from an early how, age. How, how did you reconcile what your mum tells you and what outside tells you? Obviously, I'll be completely honest with you. So like I said, from about year seven, yeah, my mum was- 11 working. years old. Yeah, my mum was working, bro. Before that, before that actually, year four, from year four, I had my own set of house keys, yeah? But yeah, I know, I'm not even trying to get my mum in trouble and incriminate <laughs> her, bad, but- Taking notes now. <laughs> so yeah, so what it is, yeah, she used to, she gave me the house keys at year four, yeah? Mm. And um, she would work 8 a.m. till 8 p.m in a FINA hotel in Paddington, yeah? Mm. So, um, yeah, so from year four, bro, obviously I'm going home by myself, 3 p.m., I've got five hours, six hours till my mum gets home, she finishes at eight, she reaches at nine. So yeah, I'm, I'm by myself after school for six hours. No, no older siblings? No older siblings? No, nobody, okay. nobody, yeah. So, so I have, no I have half brothers and sisters from mm. my dad's side, okay. but I don't live with they them. They were living with you? Okay. Yeah, I was so living you're on your own. just me and my mum, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just so. on that point though, uh, our dads, uh, you know, there's a hadith of uh, in Bukhari and Muslim of a companion Sahabi by the name of Maiz ibn Malik. Okay. So Maiz was an Ansari from Medina, became a Muslim when the Prophet came to Medina and got married. Mm-hmm. But now he's on the streets of Medina and he sees his girlfriend from before. Okay. So anyway, he falls into sin, but he comes to the end. The point I'm going to try and make is like, he's come to the Prophet ﷺ in the masjid and he said, oh, Ya Rasulullah, purify me. He had a sense of kind of like at that time, you know what, look, I've done wrong and I'm not feeling right. So even at that stage, because especially five years in Morocco, mom and dad are telling, instilling Islamic values. Were you in your heart saying, you know what? This is not right. It's haram. I can't be robbing. I can't be doing this. 100% I knew. You're okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, mm. I knew right from wrong. Um, from about three, four years old, actually. So, like I said, I, I learned how to read and write Arabic in Morocco. Mm. They teach me how to pray. Every, so, I knew right from wrong. I mm. knew everything. I was praying in, in year four five times a day, subhanAllah. And, and as I got older, I even stopped praying five times a day. So, at that age, mm. I knew exactly what was right from wrong. But, mm-hmm. like I said, because it was the freedom and I was so young, mm. I didn't know how to, I wasn't disciplined enough to, Okay. To, do you understand, to just mm. to just listen to what my mum's saying, mm. and that's that's all it was. Mm. Really you think true. as a side point, you know, so sometimes, look, mum has to work, parents have to work. Like you said, you know, sometimes, yeah. if we look at all angles, sometimes everybody does their best, but, you know, Qadar Allah, things just were, you know, happen as they happen. Maybe if there was a Muslim society, Muslim community, yeah. you know, or um, the mosque or the imam, somebody else should have been, or a Muslim youth club, somebody else should have been there also to try and assist and maybe, you know, that would have helped. Do, do, do you think that? 100%. Mm. Yeah, I fully agree. 
Um, 100% agreed. I think um, my mum did have me at a babysitter's for about three months. Hmm. Um, Muslim, obviously Muslim woman. Um, I don't know, I think it was getting too expensive for her. So she, that, she cut that out. And for those three, four months that I was, that I did have a babysitter, things did change. Like she wouldn't let me out of the house okay. until my mum come and picked me up. So that freedom is now gone. Mm. It's vanished. I'm coming, she's picking me up from school. I'm going straight to her house and she's not letting me out of that house until my mum comes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when that stopped again, it, I just went straight back into my old habits and just mm -hmm. calling bare of my friends into my house. Like, this is like the age of 10 years old, nine years old. Okay. Calling people into my house and we're going out to coming home. So sometimes my mum come home 9 p.m. and I'm still not home till 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. and I'm nine years old, 10 years old. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, is it was just a bit rough still, but mm -hmm. not not terms of um, food and clothes. Not my mum was working, so I had everything that okay. I needed. Mm. But in terms of just like, I don't know, just I was just always alone, sort of thing, mm -hmm. innit? So what was the desire to? You said robbing before, you know. So you have you know, mum's working, food's there, funds are there. She's buying your clothes. What's the desire for that then? W why would you wanna? I think it was either boredom or, mm. like I said, I just wasn't disciplined enough to um, to just control mm -hmm. that responsibility that my mum gave me at that age. Okay. Obviously, she trusted me enough to give me those keys and, mm -hmm. and yeah, I feel like I let her down because mm -hmm. most of the stuff she don't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? When I was letting lots of people in and quickly tell them to leave before she comes in. Mm -hmm. and So, yeah, mm -hmm. majority of the time... Because, you know, from a really parent's know. perspective, sometimes you're in a dilemma how much responsibility should I give to a kid? Should exactly, I give him a yeah, kid? Yeah. So sometimes they're actually doing it good. You know what? You're a sensible kid. Mm -hmm. I know you're in year four, year five, but I trust you. Mm -hmm. Thinking that that will do you good. Yeah. And bring discipline and responsibility. So it's, if a parent is tougher, it's, it's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, it's tough you being a parent. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's you a loose, win. loose situation. You can't yeah. win. Yeah. Because then if you did do that in the future, that person then resents you and says, oh, actually I was restricted and I didn't do what I wanted to do. And... Mm -hmm. But sometimes that might be the the the, the stick you die on and say, oh, that's, I, I know that's what's going to happen. So I prefer that than you. Mm, mm. It's a hard choice. Mm -hmm. And that goes into the whole dysfunctionality of a mum and a dad not being at a house. There's a reason why mum mm -hmm. and dad is is is, is very important. Very, society, very important. Yeah, it's like Facts. Society. Because sometimes it's not just mum and dad. It's 100%. like, oh, because look, divorces happen. Mm. Reality, they happen in the time of the process of the Sahaba. But what's, what's the role of a community then? Mm. And I think there's a breakdown, especially mm. in non-Muslim societies, but I think us as well as Muslims- Come in the same. There's no, there's lack of community. So that's an issue. Mm. Yeah. It's just people concentrating on their inner circle. So there's, mm. there isn't the essence, even like I said, even in Africa, Somalia is similar. Even when I went to Mauritania, there is this essence of, I don't know you, but I know your mum. Yeah. So if I see you in an issue or you're by yourself, come, let yeah. me take you home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I care for you enough. You don't have to be my blood, but I just, you're my local people, mm -hmm. so I'm going to look mm -hmm. after you. We definitely do not have that. Oh, yeah. that, what, here? Yeah. Definitely not. We don't have that. It's Man, just like, that's, that's, that's his no. son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's that kid's son. That parent is naughty or we look at them as the other. Mm -hmm. And my family's good. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say to yourself? I think that could be one of the solutions that moving nafsi, forward. Nafsi, nafsi. It's 100% nafsi, nafsi. And ain't even judgment day. Yeah. Do you know what I'm nafsi, trying to say? They're already doing it. They're yeah. already doing it, man. There's, yeah. And there's no judgment right now. It's just mm -hmm. everyone is self you know, that self-love, self-community, self-this, self-that, but there isn't a, let me sacrifice for someone. Mm. You know, when we hear about the companions, you hear stories of, you know, a companion going to another companion's house, that companion doesn't have no food or no nothing, but then it says, you know what, let's cook up something and give it to them. And the wife will say, well, we ain't got nothing to give. Let's give it to them first. Mm -hmm. We don't have that type of things. It's just, we ain't got nothing to give. So, you know, go around the corner and, mm -hmm. yeah, man, I think that's definitely a story Perhaps. that we keep hearing from mm -hmm. most guests that keep coming. That the breakdown of when they were young. Amazing story. This you just remind me. Sahaba invited uh, his fam family invited another companion, but they had very little food, just enough for their family. Mm. So what they done? They cooked it for this Sahabi, but turn off the lights or dim the lights, pretending that they're eating with him, even mm. though they're not eating, mm. because there was not enough food. Oh, well, like, it's, 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 yeah. Oh, so that's that's how the Sahaba were different levels, yeah. man. You know, the ayah, you thiruna alan fusihim, walau kana bim khazasa. They would sacrifice for others even though they're in need. Mm. You know, it's an ayah in the Quran. Yeah, I've, I've, mm. That's the solutions, man. Mm. And I think that's part of this whole podcast when we're doing these conversations and these interviews. 
is to get these ideas and then inshallah implement it back into the community mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say that should be one of the aims it shouldn't just be a conversation we have for the sake of YouTube and all of that yeah, yeah. and then once we leave nothing necessarily happens from the knowledge that you're giving us because that's a perspective that that was your reality yeah, yeah. you know what I'm trying to say and if we can come up with and deduce some form of solutions to that Inshallah, we need to try yeah. and practice it. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. So moving forward then, you said you're, you started getting into that. You had your own keys. You're in year seven. You got more into the gang thing. It was due to the environment that you was in that kind of geared you into that. You would say, even though like yeah. we've spoken about before, sometimes you can have uh, two brothers in the same house, same mom and dad, mm -hmm. same environment. Yeah. One still chooses to do legit. Yeah. And one, so like you said, you can't necessarily... Say it was the environment, but yes, the environment kind of made you... It played its part. It, it played its part, but yeah. it was you at the same time saying, I want to do that thing oh, as well. Oh, it's definitely me. 100%. Yeah, you know, yeah, sometimes yeah. you have to take ownership and say, yeah. that was what it was, but I also wanted that lifestyle. Yeah, facts. You know what I'm trying to say? Facts, facts. 100%. Facts. So it, in that, I mean, look, you know, read about or listened to some things, uh, some podcasts where you've mentioned Gas Gang, mm -hmm. Brixton Gang, you know, and, and so on. What age was that that you got involved with, you know, that particular kind of like group or, or gang uh, so I got heavily into gangs at year nine year nine yeah when I was it was like it was bad mm. in year nine like I was getting tattoos of gangs on my arms mm. saying yeah like this is me forever like it's got gas gang tattooed on me all now mm. okay so it would yeah brainwashed in year nine year ten mm. like yeah khalas, like I'm I'm ready to die for this like mm. And, yeah, it and was this bad. is like year what two thousand and four five. What what year are you looking at? I'd say when it when it was proper bad. I'd say it was oh six oh seven. Okay. And then yeah oh eight. I, I went prison that year, innit? But mm. yeah, so just before, yeah, I had like a eighteen a bad eighteen months before I went to prison. Mm. Okay. And that's that's when it was. And, and on that point, you know, because like Brixton has a rep of Muslims, a lot of Muslims. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even brothers from road and stuff. You know, they were kind of like uh, Muslims. So. Two things. One, in your gang, gas gang, uh, yeah. were the Muslims in there? And secondly, what was your concept of, let's say, somebody's from Peckham, but he's a Muslim in another gang. What am I going to do with him, that brother? Yeah, I'm gonna, is he going to be my brother? I'm going to have a concept of Wala? Or he's my enemy because, you know, he's from the next, next uh, borough, next area, next gang. You know, just do those two points. What do you think? Okay, so the I'll answer the second question first. We mm -hmm. didn't really see religion, color, race, nothing. Whether you use Muslim, mm -hmm. Chinese, a Buddhist, Jew, we will come for you. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that, that was proper. We didn't care, like Muslim or not. I know it sounds bad, but mm. like it was bad, bro. Like brothers will happily step on another brother and mm -hmm. laugh at you. Like, we did, like, yeah, religion, it was not, we're not gonna say, yeah, allow this guy, he's Muslim, let's get his friends that are all Christian. Mm. It was everyone, is if you're involved, you're gonna get it. and. That's what it was same for us. They didn't care if we was Muslim or. Mm. Yeah. What was the first question? Was so, like in it? terms of in the actual gang, were they other than you? A lot yeah, more brothers? Yeah, there was. So, in in um, in Gas Gang, yeah, because um, the, the, the older generation, um, I think you've met Stinks before. Mm, obviously, yeah, yeah. he had a big influence on us lot, innit? So, mm. and also, as you know, he's Muslim. Um, it made a lot of the younger ones revert as well because they wanted, not because it was cool. Mm -hmm. They genuinely wanted to learn about the deen in it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of younger ones did revert to Islam. Mashallah. I wasn't the only Muslim. There was a good, I'd say about a good 10, 15 of us. Okay. That okay. was Muslim at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, a lot, you've mentioned people have taken shahada, other, some of your friends yeah. or, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, uh, where are they today? Have they become Muslims? How's your relationship with them now? Yeah, alhamdulillah, majority of people, they're still, um, they're still Muslim. We okay. still speak. Okay. Um, yeah, just obviously apart from the ones that are in mm. prison. And just going back a bit, so there. generation prior to that, like Stinks as an example, you mentioned Stinks and some of the other brothers from Brixton, Mike's, Mike, yeah. uh, Shabaya, Abdul Haq, Abdul Aziz, yeah. uh, you know, some of those brothers. Uh, they had a strong concept of Muslim wala. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that generation had a big, big, you know what, you're a brother? Khala, we might have had beef with you last week, but you took yeah. a shahada? Yeah. Everything's cool. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you're a boy now. Yeah. What went wrong with your kind of like age group and, and, and gang? Why wasn't that concept there? I have no idea. I think we was, we, we, well, we was definitely stupider than the older lot. <laughs> we was way more stupider than yeah. them. We was like rolling in batches of 30 and 40, just doing stupid. 
I never seen them do that, and the older ones. I've never seen them move like that. Um, so I think it was just a different generation. Um, it's when like Bebo, them little stuff started coming into light. Mm -hmm. So it was just a different generation. Um, and yeah, we just, we wasn't thinking about like brotherhood and stuff like that. It was just literally, like I said, like I had gas gang tattooed on me. So to me at the time, my gang was more important than my dean at the time. Mm -hmm. At the time, that's how bad it was. So, okay. like, I would sometimes, brother, I would come home, Akia, mm. and I would pray, yeah. This says this sounds so, but it's true, Akia. Mm. I would pray to my gang, like, mm -hmm. we need to do this. Like, I'm praying for the gang, to the gang, everything. No worries. You know, yeah, like, like, I was ill, Ak, I was ill. So, and obviously, that led me to prison. Alhamdulillah, where well, I found myself again in the mosque there, innit? Okay. I'm thinking, what am I doing, like? So, yeah, that's, but it was bad, man. It was bad. I was proper lost. But it, in the in the whole gas gang, so obviously I understood all of that. I was, at that age, that was similar, my kind of era, when, from Lucian size and get on all of that. The whole gas gang thing, at like your age, would you say you lot didn't necessarily have elders that guided you lot? That like led you by the hand or... They were in prison. So the ones that were Muslim, say. they were they were in prison apart from Judge of Souls. But he did try to guide us, but mm. there's only so much one can man do. can do. Yeah, but he definitely tried. He played his part. And majority of the, the Muslim elders was in jail, wasn't it? Hence, you lot started your own thing and was like exactly. your own leaders. Exactly. Hence the name Gas Gang. Exactly. You know, like you're just going to do anything and exactly. whatever. There was, there was no one to kind of tell us what to... Everyone was in jail at. Mm. So we kind of just kind of like just had the whole area to us do what we want mm. sort of thing. And at that time, no I guidance. remember you know was fighting even within Brixton. Yeah, yeah, within each other, uh, fighting Peckham, um, local areas. Yeah. Mm. What was the your Angel Town estate or? Yeah, Angel, I was more Brixton overall. Oh, uh, Maxfield, yeah. Angel Town. Yeah, okay. I was I was just Brixton. Mm. Um, and then yeah, obviously as times just went on. Um, it's got worse within the area and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah. You mentioned 2008, you went into prison. Uh, how long were you in prison for? Uh, so my sentence was uh, three and a half years. Okay. And I served half of that time in prison. So I did, uh, so it was about 18 months. 18 months. And yeah. what happened with the dean side there? You went inside, you said you went to the mosque there, you linked up with some brothers, well, explain a bit what was going through yeah, you at so that time. I'll be completely honest, when I when I went to uh, Feltham, mm. um, you get to put your name down, they offer you if you want to go to the church or if you want to go to the mosque. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I hadn't been mosque for about two whole years. So when when the, the, the imam and the priest came to my cell and they was asking me if I wanted to go to the church or to the mosque, obviously I said the mosque, but when I said the mosque at the time, it wasn't because I want to go mosque, it was because I want to get out of my cell. Mm -hmm. Any excuse to get out of that cell. But then slowly, I actually started praying and it kind of made me realize that obviously the man was, like, he was a proper good man. He knows how to connect with people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. speak to you the right way that mm -hmm. you're going to understand, especially when you're young. How old so, were you when you went in? 16. 16, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so I just kind of slowly started to find myself. Okay. And then I got shipped from Felton to, to Bristol, mm -hmm. but I carried on going to the mosque. Okay. And um, doing my Ramadan in jail, Mashallah. praying. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, when I came out, I was on a much better track than I was before I had gone okay. into prison. So you come out, you know, you're, six, you're 17 and a half, probably 18. 18, yeah. 18, and uh, you kept up the Salah, you kept up yeah. the Ramadan, you kept yeah. up the Quran. Yeah. Okay, in terms of... Um, uh, the music scene. When did you start rap? Before did you start rapping when you were much younger, or when when you went to prison or after prison? Um, I, I started rapping in two thousand and eight, but it was more uh, just to do diss tracks for like Peckham boys and stuff. It was just a joke thing, back back okay. and forth diss tracks. Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't taking music serious. When I came out in two thousand and ten, I didn't do music, mm -hmm. and then two thousand and eleven, I started. Mm -hmm. Um, I think me and Shallow, we put out our first track together and we got like a big response. And then... Um, proper recorded? Proper recorded? Studio recording or just...? Yeah, no, proper recording, studio okay. recording. We went to Speak World Studio in Bridgeton at the time, done it with one of the best cameramen at the time we could find. It was uh, Danny from Press Play. He's still about now. Um, I think he was 12 at the time when we did it, actually. He was 12, yeah? He, he was a little boy, bro, <laughs> with some little camera. 
Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, mashallah. But yeah, we um, we done that video, put it out, got a big response, and then I just carried on doing music, 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 mm-hmm. and then that that's that's when I slowly now started to stop praying. Stop praying. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. I stopped praying. I started going to um, obviously I'm, you look must know who Sneak Bow is. He's a rapper. Mm-hmm. I started going to all his shows. At the time, I was he, young. He was from Gas Gang with you, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So he he made it kind of big in 011. I started going to all his shows, started drinking, mm-hmm. um, smoking. W- watching or actually singing in his... in his. You're presenting or you just... I had of... one or two songs of him, but mainly mm. watching um, to go for motivation, inspiration. So he was taking me to all these shows um, to like launch parties with chipmunks, stuff like that. And at, at the time... I had just come out of prison and now I'm in rooms with Chipmunk and all these people, Retch 32. So I'm saying, yeah, this is it. Like, so my, now I'm just like brainwashed again. So I've, I'm completely stopped praying. I'm not going moss no more. I'm just doing music. I'm chasing gal. I'm making gal come link me. I'm smoking weed. I'm drinking alcohol. I'm going to this show, that show, this party, that party. And that went on for... I, that went on for like five years, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that went on for like five years. Obviously, every now and again, I would pray. If Ramadan comes, I would do my Ramadan, obviously. Mm-hmm. But between that, like, that was it. Like, I was bad, like. Mm-hmm. But explain to me, for me, just out of trying to understand it, how is that mindset? So, like, you, you're doing music. Mm-hmm. There's drinking going on. There's the weed thing. There's all that. So, how's your day-to-day, like, what is it? Like, is it... Waking up. Do you know what it is? Like the roadside, how it used to be, you just link a man, chill all day. Like, wasn't there a time? You see, like, the, the good thing with prison, a lot of people don't appreciate, is that it gives you that time to contemplate. Mm-hmm. You know when that door locks? Yeah. There's no one else there. Do you mm-hmm. get what I'm trying to say? And it's just you and your thoughts. Trust me. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But with, when you come out onto the... And that's why you see many people so-called practising in prison. But then when they come out, and everything is released to them, mm-hmm. that whole contemplation, whatever they thought is gone. Facts. And they just get back to their normal, Facts. whatever they wanted to do. Facts. So would you say when you came out and you saw that it was just, every day it's just like being on a, you know, Literally. like a spinning wall kind of thing. Like yes. there's no time to contemplate. Yes, yeah, repetitive, repetitiveness, 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 repetitiveness. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's every day the same. And like I said, like, that went on for years. Mm. For years. It wasn't like six months, like literally years. But I fell into like a deep hole. I was just, I don't know, I was just chasing the wrong stuff, you get me? So, yeah, that, that was bad, man. For like five, say four, five, possibly six years, it was, it was just bad, didn't it? But it's bad it's looking brilliant. back in hindsight, or was it bad in the sense of even whilst you was in it, you felt bad? What kind of badness is it? Yeah, do you know what? The mindset that I was in, yeah, basically, do you know when you're, when you're like, you're just, you're sinning, basically, yeah? then you're saying, oh, why am I going to pray if I'm going to keep sinning? Mm. But you're not knowing the prayer is just going to help you stop sinning. Mm. So you keep saying to yourself, nah, when I pattern up, then I'll pray. Mm. But then I never patterned up. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? 100%. So then I never prayed. So mm. literally, it was bad, bro. Like mm. four or five years, I didn't do no prayers. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It was would, bad, bro. Would, would you say, though, you were stimulated by the life that you was living, like you felt, con- like you was, you, was, you was content with what you was doing? Yeah, so I wasn't making money in 11 or 12 or 12. I was poor, I was broke, okay. but I was just happy to be going to all these places mm. with £20 in my pocket, okay. stupid. Mm. So, yeah, it's just dumb. The limelight like, was making you happy in essence at that time, yeah. all the people that you was around and... Yeah, exactly. It's mm. one of them ones, that just mm. to go into these events, places, mm. it was motives, innit? Mm. But not, no one from the olders, you know, advising you and saying, look... No, you know, yeah, no, no guidance from no olders, no one, nothing. Were they still no. inside or somewhere out? And but still, you know what? Nobody was kind of like linking you. The majority of them was in prison. A couple of them was on the roads, but obviously they're doing their thing as well. They're getting older, kids, this and that. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you yeah. think, from from your perspective, some of the other brothers, it might even be people from the masjid or you know imam or imams, they see a brother struggling, but rather than coming out to help, it's like you know what. Like, this guy's a waste man, there's no use, you know, or they treat him harsh. Yeah. So nobody wants to gel with those brothers or with the imam. Do you think that was there or? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was there. So you felt like people didn't want to associate with you that was practice, so-called practicing? Yeah, because it's like, they're worried now, I'm going to bring them down, innit? Mm. 
Do you know what I mean? So you like my proper Muslim friends, they didn't want to be around me. Mm. Like shaz, all my proper Muslim friends, yeah, they didn't want to every time I come around, they come around me, I'm smoking and that, bro. I'm blowing weed towards them and that. You know what I mean? He's trying to do his salat and that I'm making him redo his wudu. Mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean, bro? Like, so yeah, they weren't trying to be around me like that, man. Mm. I'll be real. My and proper the, Muslim that, friends, they weren't trying to be around me. That, did that make you kind of distance yourself more then? In essence, or yeah. do you think to yourself, oh, actually, I'm in the wrong. What kind of angle did you take? Bro, I knew they, that they was in the right and I was in the wrong. Mm. But like I said, I was in the mindset of when I'm ready, mm. I'll pattern up. Mm. No, 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 no. Let me not do it now. There's no point. Mm. I'm going to keep sinning. I was at that mindset, innit? Mm -hmm. So I think that was the main barrier for me is that I just, I wasn't thinking properly, innit? Okay. Mm -hmm. And just, I might have skipped it a bit, but even in the gang thing, I know a lot of people who don't talk about this, but... When you went prison, prior to prison, I can guarantee you probably had, you would say to yourself, a lot of friends. Would you say in prison, the same so-called friends that you thought you had showed that same level of love and how your mom came to visit you and write to you or send your money, the so-called friends you had, did they do that same thing for you? No, definitely not. Um, obviously, we, I was young at the time. 16, um, you said, yeah. Yeah, 16. And the reality of it is like, when you're like 15, 16, you roll with 40, 50 people, you know you're not going to roll with these people in 10 years, isn't it? Mm -hmm. but you do it anyway because you're young isn't it? and it's something to do. Isn't it? mm -hmm. But yeah, no, nah, the, the, the support from obviously the man that wasn't really there, they were kids as well though. They, mm -hmm. they can't even come visit me without their mum being there. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was, true. you can't, yeah, this, like now, obviously, if I was to go to prison, I know facts, my friends, the brothers in that room, they've got me, they'll look after my wife, my son, but when you're when you're that young, there's only so much your friends can actually do for you in that position. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just one of them ones. I wouldn't deep that one too much because a lot of people they do hold that against their friends. Like, oh, bro, you weren't checking me, no, no, no. But don't even think of it like that, man. It's genuinely not intentional. Like they can't get to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't have money. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that's all it is, man. Yeah, I hear you. And then in that, I think I was listening to a couple of your thing. You, you you've 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 lost a few friends in yeah. that world yeah 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 is there like a certain amount one two three how many to be honest i, I would have to count but it's just on probably about eight no way yeah seven eight it's these are people you rolled with yeah side people by side. i've grown with side by side yeah i've got some names tattooed on me also when i was younger just getting the name tattooed and mm -hmm. all that you know what i mean but yes yeah, muslims non-muslims uh, two was Muslims, mm. yeah, two was brothers still. Did that have an impact on you? Yeah, definitely, man. Mm. Definitely. Uh, the first, like, the first, first death actually was a brother called Tiny Alien, yeah? No, 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 and no. that was lot. So I'd, he wasn't my close friend like mm. that. He was a bit older than me, innit? But I used to see him. So mm. This was when I first got involved into gangs. And obviously, you know, the first time, you go through it's, 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 it has the most effect. So mm. when I found out he died, that was like a smack to the face, man, because I was in year nine or something. Mm. And yeah, he was Muslim. He was only in year 10 himself. SubhanAllah. Yeah, so mm. then after that, you slowly become numb, numb to it, innit? You say like it's part of the, it's part of what you signed up to kind of thing, innit? Yeah, yeah after like the third person has died, it's like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's sad every time it happens, but mm. it's, it doesn't hit you as much as it the It comes first. like a protocol, man. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's part of what we signed up to. It's another yeah. man's died, you know what? Rest in peace onto yeah, the next yeah. one. Yeah, literally. It's not like a shocking thing or more mm. like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When did you start getting into like proper music, you know, videos, becoming an artist? What, what age and, you know, when did you get into big into it? Uh, took it I started taking it serious from 2011. So I mm. put out a song with Shallow, that was my duo partner. Mm. Did pretty well. At the time, it did like five, ten thousand views overnight, which was like the equivalent of getting like 100k now overnight. Yeah, because yeah, it was less, less people views online, than this, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it was, those views was absolutely crazy those times. And um, yeah, man, when, when we put that out, we just kind of kept pushing. <laughs> started getting little shows here and there. And yeah, I'd say we made a name for ourselves in 011 or 012. That's when I started doing it properly, taking it serious. And that's when I, I thought, yeah, man, I can actually make, make something from this. Okay. Yeah. Side point to that, I mean, some of the brothers, you know, they, they, they mentioned you've got a talent in yeah. terms of lyrics and, you know, 
you know, you're not a rapper, you're like an artist in the yeah. field. Uh, do you think, you know, you could use that, those lyrics and being an artist in the field for better causes? Let's say there's Islamophobia, let's say there's racism, let's say there's kind of oppression, yeah. you know, Muslims are oppressed for others. And you could use your skill in addressing those issues. And also a second point uh, would be, let's say there's kind of like naked women in, uh, in the videos or in the songs. Could there be boundaries that you could put into your... Uh, your music is yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know, it's just something that I don't do, but definitely it's doable, yeah, mm. thousand percent. Um, that's a promise, brothers. Yeah, that's a promise <laughs> right, right here. Yeah, he's <laughs> making <laughs> next video is going to be that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, yeah. you think that can be done? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got, you've got some Muslim artists that, um, that make music about. The dean and not necessarily just the dean, but just positive vibes in it. So mm. they're making music, but UK, yeah, UK, okay, okay. yeah, yeah, UK. Um, so his name. You talking about like Muslim Bilal and that, or you talking about like yeah, there's Muslim the Bilal. There's a there's a brother called what's his name Shaquille something. Oh, yeah, Romero, 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 Shaquille. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he makes music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he makes like he, he was stinks, man. Stinks sometimes. You know, stinks. His lyrics are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some yeah. deep stuff, actually. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah. Facts, facts. Mm. So would you would you do you think? Because my angle is, you know, oppression needs to be challenged. Mm -hmm. So much going on. Mm -hmm. Rather than uh, use our skill that Allah's given us to support the industry, let's challenge the system is which is oppressive. Facts. You know, and if you've got that, Akhi, if you've got that, then you know, Bismillah. Facts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Facts. So we're waiting on the next track, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With Imam in the background, yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason he'll do it, Ak. You have to be in it, bro. That, we gotta do it like that, bro. Setting me up, yeah. Setting me nah, up. I think you know what. Look, money with the music thing and anyone, the 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 aim is money. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. You know what I'm trying to say? The aim is money, mm -hmm. and we know as Muslims that whatever we make in this world, there is no fat either when you die and you go to the grave. Not the money, not the house, any of that ain't gonna come with us. You know what I'm trying to say, Ak. Mm -hmm. So. You're a smart guy and I've seen your video with, uh, what's the other brother you've done a thing with? Five Pillars, Dilly. Yeah, so there's no point in repeating yeah. it. You said you're going to try to change it, inshallah. Of course, as Muslims, we want the best for you. Yeah. And any brother who's in the, and, and vice versa, you'd want the best for me if yeah, I was facts. doing certain things. Do you know what I'm facts. trying to say, Ak? Facts. So it's just a matter of when, inshallah. And I'm, I think you said you got a clothing line as well. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. you're doing. So yeah. that will make money as well, inshallah. Well, I, I say my personal stories, things like, like you were saying about, I don't want to change until I'm not doing certain sins. Now I remember I was in prison doing my sentence and I had beef with anyone, name it, I was beefing in prison. This guy, Brixton, Peckham, everyone. Yeah, yeah. It was just happening for me, me, soldier. It was just happening. Yeah, yeah. And there was a time, you know, you just get tired of going to the block. Yeah, yeah. You just go block for a month, come out, fight someone, go down, block again, fight someone. It's like, bro, I'm tired of this pr prison life, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to try to change. And I remember I was in Portland and uh, a brother, he, he died. I heard he died lately, subhanAllah. May Allah forgive him, man. Ahmed, his name was, he he said to me, you know what, you know, try practicing and praying and things like that. I'm like, Same thing. I'm like, nah, man, I, I do too much bad to be praying. Mm. But he gave me a video. I was on basic in Portland. He gave me a, like a CD and uh, I didn't even put the CD because the TV's under my bed. So you're not allowed to have TV. Yeah, 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 basic, but I had a TV <laughs> yeah. and I was hiding it under my bed. You know what I'm trying to say? So he sent me a DVD and then one of my other friends called Morocco, if you ever see this, good to you, bro, my bro. He guy called Morocco and he's from Morocco, mm -hmm. funny enough. And he come to me, he's like, bro, there's a guy on the wing. And he said, he beat you up. I'm like, what? <laughs> say no more. Funny enough, the DVD he gave me is about brotherhood. Yeah. So night times come, obviously, gloves are left. I put my TV up, put the DVD in, I'm watching this, and he's talking about brotherhood. And you know what? This the companions at the time, they used to drag each other back in war and they'll push each other in front so that the one behind goes in front to die from the one that was in front of him, kind of thing. And I'm thinking, this is some crazy type of brotherhood. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Sure. Next day come now. I've got the, I'm not a boasting thing, but the wing is my wing in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I've come out now and I've seen this guy who's talking, and he's from Brixton, funny enough. Yeah. So I've seen him and well, like in my heart, the, the, the brain is telling me one thing, but the heart is telling you, you know when you have that battle, bro, 
I've gone to the brother, wallahi, I think this was the first time I said to myself, I'm going to change. I went to the brother, I said, look around you. I can easily tell everyone right now to beat you up. <laughs> easily. But you know what? You're Muslim. He's Muslim. Mm. I said, you're Muslim though. And for that, I'm going to leave you. And from that, it's like things start to change for me. You know, like just from one yeah, good yeah. little thing you do, things start to change for you. Mm -hmm. From that, I went to another prison. I was beefing other guys. People I used to beef that I think it's never going to end unless one of us dies. Mm -hmm. He's written to me. Mm -hmm. And he says, Ak, let's squash the beef. I'm practicing Islam now. Not I want to sure lead that life. So my point I'm making is when you when you do something for the sake of Allah, wallahi, I'm, and I've said it's happened to me so many times. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna leave that. The next day or even a week later, business comes through mm -hmm. or an opportunity comes through or something comes through, and that's the same for you. I think I think sometimes we fear if we leave something, nothing else will open, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be left. I have to start again. I ain't got no business. I haven't got say so called transferable skills. So I think. The shaitan tells you, look, man, just stick to what you're doing. And then when you're ready, you know, but that you already know, you're just going to follow that until mm -hmm. maybe you die. Achi. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So that's my advice is like, I hear what you're saying, but no one ever knows when they're going to pass. The intention is the key thing. You know, like we hear that story. I know you heard it in prison as well about the 99, the guy who killed 99. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Feltum Sheikh used to rinse that on us. Yeah, rinse. It? Rinse it every Friday. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a brother 99 he killed. <laughs> da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah, Sheikh, we heard this about a million times, you know. But now in hindsight, yeah. I get it. You know, like you make an intention to change. Allah makes that path easy for you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And I think that's something just to bear in mind that mm -hmm. you make the intention, inshallah. And step by step, that thing will, you know, it will pass, Akhi. Yeah. I don't think the music thing is as big in your heart as maybe other people might make it. I think you yeah. know in yourself that it's something you can do. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? And all yeah. these other solutions, inshallah, that will come in time as well. Mm -hmm. And From that point, that's I a legacy, man. Yeah. Uh, positive point as well. So one of the, our cameramen mentioned, you think, was, you, you know, the during the Palestine kind of like, struggle our brothers this is what I'm going through you yeah. must have posted something yeah, yeah. Uh, you know just a few points on number yeah. one why why and also you know your concept of wala for the global ummah you know what, what do you have in your in your heart and mind I just feel like um, number one the reason I posted it is because um, obviously that through that whole week on social media we could we were, everyone was aware of what's happening in Palestine is being publicized everywhere but I feel like in in the music scene um, people always pick and choose on what to post, on what subjects they wanna they wanna um, stand by and post and this and that. So yeah, there was literally no one posting about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just posted it and I just I captioned it. Make sure you lot will post or yeah, be ashamed of yourself in it. Um, yeah, that was it. I just felt like whenever it comes to like Muslim suffering mm -hmm. or anything to do with Muslims, no one's interested. Oh, it's all right. They'll be all right. Mm. goes out the back window there's no form of like how can i say not campaigns what's the word i'm looking for there's no aware like no one's raising awareness, awareness okay yeah mm. so yeah, and, for that, yeah know, that's, that's, that's what like, it was yeah, yeah you know appreciate it and shows iman i think you know alhamdulillah yeah. let's give you with iman because some people say look it might affect my my industry my music mm -hmm. maybe some of the people i want to work with would say look what are you speaking about politics or especially mm. Palestinians because yeah, you know yeah. Zionists are kind of like you know, yeah. on, on against the Palestinians yeah. Alhamdulillah you didn't do that so that's a big thing yeah. uh, also going back onto the South London kind of like you know scene and vibe yeah. you know sometimes we go to East London North London and we kind of like say like brothers ain't giving salam yeah. you know but in South London you pass by a brother that you know is a Muslim and it's love and salam you know, yeah. even up to now before it used yeah. to be much better Facts, yeah. you know and then you know, you'll have a group of brothers from Brixton or Lucia or Peckham and it's black, white, Asian, Turkish, mm -hmm. Albanian. It's a mixed crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, Wala is there for Dean and Muslims. Mm -hmm. You know, did you see that, you, you know, you, you, do you see that in South London? Yeah, facts. 100%. Mm -hmm. A lot of, um, there's a lot of people now in South London that are Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and now it's, nowadays, 100%, the, the brotherhood is there, man, 100%. Mm -hmm. New York, Brixton, Moss, Brixton Road, Moss. You see so many faces. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, definitely, it's, it's there, 100%. MashaAllah. You mentioned, alhamdulillah, you're married, you got a son. Yeah. Has that helped you? Has that uh, helped you in your deen, in your iman? Has yeah. that kind of like grounded you, made you kind of like a better, more stable person? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I feel when I got married, 
Um, it's made me feel better in general, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Just one wife, yeah? Yeah, yeah, one wife, yeah. I'll keep it one way. S- scared to say it. Yeah. Second wife, two, man. That's scared to say it, man. You talk behind the scenes, like... <laughs> no, no, one, no, one we'll keep wife. confidential, man. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, no, one wife. That's, that's me for now, man. Sorry, I was going to do a joke in the beginning. Yeah. I was going to say, look, Bizian. Bizian <laughs> yeah, yeah. is from um, Morocco. Good. You're all right. Yeah, so yeah, he's good. probably going to say, how do you know that? I was going to say, my fourth wife is Moroccan. <laughs> it's a joke. Though. It's a joke, though, yeah. Wink, it's a wink. joke, wife. It's a joke, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, my wife will kill me. She's not here in that one. <laughs> but that keeps you that. grounded, though, now that you have a wife and a kid. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I've got a daughter on the way as well. MashaAllah. Two, two. Yeah. MashaAllah. Thank Allah. you. Thank cool. you. So I think moving forward then, What's like your projection for the future now as it stands like from where you are now? What's the, let's say the next five years, ten years, what's the plan? Um obviously try to focus on make some halal money is my main thing right now. Inshallah. And yeah, slowly uh stop doing all this music and I don't wanna be going to shows and being drunk at 30, bruv. Like mm-hmm. it's just long, isn't it? Do you know what I mean, bruv? I've done all that. That's my main thing now, man, is just slowly moving off because it's still my main income in it so um yeah it's just mainly just coming off the music thing and um yeah man just trying to do other stuff that i've got business related yeah yeah alhamdulillah i've got i've got one two bits going on to just slow sh- slowly but surely pick him up apart from business is there like other things you want to get into or think that you can influence um no do you know i was gonna get into um What's it? Race driving, Formula One. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I want to. Yeah? yeah, I want to get back into that. I used to do it like a year ago, but mm. you know what? Um, there's a there's a car in Milton Keynes, Daytona Motorsports. I used to go there like every okay. week, bang it out. Cars okay. are fast. They do like seventy miles per hour, mm. seventy five. So I was training, training, and then I wanted to to go up a level where you do the hundred mile per hour cars, isn't it? So and this is like professional kind of things. Semi pro professional. Yeah. Okay, okay. I wanted to get into that to racing, and yeah, that's that's me. Mm. Yeah, man. No, Alhamdulillah, man. Anything inshallah. else? I mean, you know, in terms of uh, the Quranic recitation from you, inshallah, you yeah. did mention when you're in Morocco, you could read and write. Yeah, yeah. Any surah that you want to recite for us, inshallah. Sure, yeah, man, 100%. As long as it's not surah Baqarah, yeah? No, no, I do. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-Din. Wa yaka na'budu wa yaka nista'een. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل والله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد ما شاء الله ما شاء الله خير بارك الله فيك from surah fatiha you, you, you read up on me in meaning of that surah I haven't. I'm rusty so right now. No, it's, a very, to, yeah. it's a very important surah. And it talks yeah. about Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allah is saying Alhamd. For yeah. the world. For the world. He, 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 Alhamdulillah. He's the Rabb of all of Alameen. For the whole the world. The whole world. Yeah, yeah. You know? Rahman Rahim. The, the most merciful. The, 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 the beneficent. Okay. You know? And the other part is Malik Yawmiddin. He's the king of this whole Malik, yeah, yeah, you know like the day of judgment people will say or things like that so for me that's a sort of when I try to read it because it's like a lot Alhamdulillah I feel like you're on top of the earth you know like you're looking down onto the earth kind of thing Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and I think the more people understand what they actually say the more you're into the Salah yeah. I think a lot of us yourself like you just said we don't really understand what the words even mean so, and hence we're not interconnected with what Allah is saying. But the more we learn what Allah is saying, the more spiritually Facts. we are in tune with what we're doing. And then it also helps with the other things like you're saying about sins and, because we all commit sins. You might just commit one that people can see on YouTube, yeah. but all of us privately yeah, yeah. are sinning. It's just that no one else knows about it apart from Allah. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I pray that Allah helps us, you, and makes all Thank our affairs you. easy, inshallah, man. And Jazakum Allah khair for coming from far. Yes. And inshallah we meet again, bro. Inshallah, yeah. bro. Barakallah, Fiq. Jazakumullah khair for those watching. And inshallah we'll see you on the next one.